When I first believed in high school, I took this book so literally. I got saved in a Baptist church. They told me to read the Bible. I start reading the Bible. And I'm like reading going, whoa, are you kidding me? With faith, I can move mountains? No joke, no exaggeration. I went in my bedroom, I closed the door, and I thought, I'm going to move stuff. <laughs> I did. Because I'm just going, that's what the Word of God says. You know, and I'm just like staring at my chair and going, I believe. You know? You know, and it's like, oh, okay, I'll start with like a pen, you know? That's not moving. And then I literally just thought, okay, if I can just make this shutter, a little bit of the butt, you know, nothing. And my like, gosh, you know, what was that? And then, you know, when people start explaining the word of God to me and they go, well, he didn't really mean that. He didn't really mean this. He didn't really mean this. And then throughout life, people just kept telling me. I'm like, gosh, it, it seems like that whatever I ask in his name, no, he didn't really mean that. He wants us to do things beyond what I can imagine. No, he doesn't. Re and everything just kind of got reduced. And no, no, no. So every promise I would see, I began to just look at it and go, probably didn't mean that. But it was just later in deeper study, I just go, gosh, I'm seeing these people with faith. And it was that faith of the centurion goes, no, Jesus, I know what it means to be in charge. You could just, you don't even have to go to my house. And Jesus is like, whoa, I've never seen faith like that. There was that crowd pressing in to see Jesus right after that. And remember when that woman touches him? And he goes, who touched me? The disciples are like, everyone? <laughs> He's like, no, 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 no. No, not like this one person did. She went after me and power went out of me. And I'm just looking and I go, gosh, see, there's, there's people where it was that faith, it was that belief, and, 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 and I'm just going, Lord, I want to be one of those people. And, and just going, God, I believe in this. And so for the last few years, I have believed, believed in miracles. And I have, you know, when I meet the sick, pray for them and, and believe for healing. And I'm, and I'm so shocked because every time I would pray, nothing would happen. It gets discouraging, you know? And, and sometimes I'd even go like overseas to where I'd hear about all these miracles happening, go, okay, let me at least see it. And I'd get there, whether Africa, India, whatever, and nothing. And they're like, oh, you should have been here yesterday. <laughs> so it, it was like this complex, you know? But I tell you, when I was in that village two weeks ago, no believers. They don't even have a comprehension of healing. And I'm going, God, please, please hear. People started coming forward for healing. Every person I touched was healed. You guys, okay. This is, this is craziness to me. I have never experienced this in 52 years. I'm talking like a little boy and a little girl who were deaf. We lay hands, she starts crying and smiling. Again, these are not Christians. These are not people who even heard about Jesus. And she's freaking out. And we're like, lay hands on your little brother. You know, we lay hands on him. And he starts hearing for the first time. Like, you guys, this is out of my comfort zone. This is stuff I'd read about, but I'm going, man... It happened, it happened. I mean, just stuff like left and right. I'm going, this isn't, and that's why I'm going, God, I don't want to leave this. This is, I mean, I, I, I thought I had faith, but my faith was at another level. And I think there's some things that contributed. Some of it was just faith in his word, that, that when Jesus says, I'm in you and you are in me, to take that literally, 
Seriously, to take it little. I mean, think about that passage in John 14. Jesus talks about, you know, how he's going to go to the Father, you know, and then Philip says, can you just show us the Father? That'll be enough. And Jesus says the weirdest thing. He goes, how could you say that? Anyone who's seen me has seen the Father. That was the strangest statement. No one talks like that. If my kids at school say, I'd like to meet your dad. How could you say that? <laughs> you, you, you don't, right? But Jesus was saying something so out of this world. He goes, you don't understand the oneness the Father and I have. It's like nothing on this earth. He and I are one. And if you've seen me, you've seen him. You're just going, what in the world? And then you see Jesus pray in John 17. He goes, Father, just like you and I are one, I want them to be in us. He says, I'm, I'm going to abide in you, and you abide in me. And somehow, when he says he is seated, he says we are seated with him in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority. There's a real way in which I am abiding with Jesus right now, as he sits on his throne far above all rule and authority, and there's a very real way that he is in me and abiding in me now. And so when I walked in that village with a little bit of fear, I said, no, no. This is no different than if you walked in the village. And I know what you'd do, Jesus. You'd proclaim the good news, and you'd heal, and I could do what you... I started having this mindset again. I've gone, no, this is what the Word of God says. You said I would do the same things that you did and even greater things. Jesus, I know what you would have done in this village. 